I think we're live. Catch Paul in the kitchen. Uh, I'm just waiting for our first guest to tune in. We're going to be chatting with Annabelle from Garden of Alchemy. And I'm super excited to dive deep and understand what her understanding of health is. So she's now coming. See if this works. Waiting. It looks like it's all dialing up. We're waiting. Okay, here she comes. Hi, Annabelle. Hello. <laughs> How new is that? That is crazy. All this new technology. Yeah. I know. So I was just saying to people, uh, well, there's no one there, but I think people can watch <laughs> this back later. Um, we're going to try and do a 20-minute chat. So like I said, I was just going to introduce you as Annabelle, mother of two. You're saying you have a very interesting uh, career prior where you're at now as a chef and a photographer. So food and beauty and now or appreciation of beauty with photography and now more into spiritual healing and all those things in some way or another kind of make up your understanding of what health is nowadays to you. Absolutely. So what, is, yeah. what, what, would, what, what, is, what would you say health is, what it means to you? How do you improve your health? How do you support others improving their health? Mm. So, yeah, I think, I think adventure is the word that comes to me because I've always had like a seeking kind of wanting to understand. I think health being a resonance of what feels in alignment with myself. So whether that be what I eat or who I hang around with or my choice, really. I think it's it's how I choose to, yeah, empower myself. So yeah, there's been so many aspects of health on my journey. Um, and, and food has been a huge part of that, you know, which is where we, we meet each other and uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, alignment was the word that really kind of stuck out for me and as you were describing that. And at the minute, practicing more Qigong, I kind of dip in and out of these different uh, practices, whether yoga or meditation or Qigong at the minute, depending on time allowed with family commitments and work commitments. Um, and food is obviously at the forefront for me. And just chatting to you before we came on live, it's not the be all on end be all and or end all is other aspects and for me alignment with yourself and the seasons and the kind of cycles of nature so how would you or what would you say is your way that you kind of help connect and establish a good alignment with yourself and the bigger yeah. cycles well yeah for sure as you know i think my career in food at the time wasn't so conscious it was more about you know everything tasting amazing and then when I got into spirituality, it was all about, um, yeah, this connection to time, you know, this, this, this idea of seasons, like you say, and um, particularly being a woman, you know, with our menstrual cycle as well, you know, with hormones yeah. and peaks and, you know, that very much, uh, a lot of this is so much knowledge and from a logical point of view, you can study and study, you know, what you need, when to affect. But actually what I've learned is that Actually, learning to listen to yourself is, you know, one of the hardest journeys, but also one of the most rewarding because the body always knows, you know, mm -hmm. beyond being in a kind of place of addictive based cravings, you know, once you've kind of got yourself to a place where you've maybe done a detox or you've started to, you know, put more energy into your choices, then it's really about kind of fine tuning all the little habits around, you know, how we reach for food, um, you know, where we're hungry as in empty in ourselves, and, you know, how we choose to see food like as a plant medicine. I think that's the most mm -hmm. important thing. So I work with plant medicines and I never thought when I started with plant medicines, I never really thought of food as a plant medicine, you know, until, you know, now really, you know, it's come full circle where I'm really like, wow, you know, each and every piece of food I put in my mouth carries an energy and that's just really something to be so grateful about you know yeah, yeah, abundance yeah. to to be able to eat I love eating you know it's yeah. just <laughs> and enjoyment is is such a big part of that 
uh, chatting with other people and chatting with you before, I think you can go down these different kind of rabbit holes of following uh, this raw vegan or this juicing or, or this keto diet and you follow all these different diets. And I've got still got many close friends that follow these different seemingly opposing diets. And if I chat with them and we're both in an awareness of receptivity and taking each other's points of views on, however long we get to a, a point where we go, well, if a diet is enabling you to be able to listen, to be able to hear your body more. So any diet that is allowing you to listen to your body signals, for me, it is a good diet. And whether that's what seems to be diametrically opposite, whether it's completely animal product free or it's a keto based diet, as long as it's attuning you and allowing you to be able to listen to your body signals more, I think that diet is then working for you. Yeah, I, I, I really dropped the story that there's one way, you know, after like yeah. being a vegan and then, you know, having to bring in bone broths to support the healing of my gut and, you know, the kind of hypocrisy I felt in myself when I had to, to make that step because I was so attached to the identity of being one of those. And that's a journey I've had throughout my life is that it's all about non-identifying in my external reality. And also through that trial and error, joining different clubs or different ways, I have kind of taken the bits that really work for me. And so it feels like a kind of fusion and alchemy. I'm not even sure what the right thing to do is, but it's, it's more about not being afraid to just go on a journey, you know, whatever's showing up in your reality, you know, whether it's a vegan juice detox or whether it's a, you know, something else it's about just having the courage to go for it fully um and try not to be too righteous along the way that that's my my feedback because <laughs> yeah, i've been yeah, yeah. known to be very much this is the way and, i think uh, we've all been there if you say you follow many diets i'll follow many diets and when one's working for you you start to think this is the way and when other people aren't following similar protocols you think well you know and you have the judgment around it and having followed these completely opposite diets, you have to realize, well, it's different for everyone. And it's different for everyone at different times in their lives to do with the seasons, the cycles within their life cycle. So it's just so many variables that there isn't one way. It's just a way that works for you. And obviously sustainability is a big thing. Having chatted to you before, you can't just be all this plastic packaged, imported, superfoods you know you need to be in tune with the seasons with the cycles local seasonal yeah. organic so it's going to have a less of a carbon footprint so there seems to be so many variables so yeah like you said the judgment of what other people are doing needs to kind of fall away people are always doing the best they can in the situation that they're in and then supporting them whatever situation they're in to make better better choices so it's a kind of a journey we're all on a journey and we're all at yeah. different stages Absolutely. of this journey and my, you know, my, my new baby is, is, is my cacao. And, you know, I've just imported this cacao from Ecuador. And it's funny because this is, you know, this is more like food and medicine, you know, like, of course it has, you can just have it as a hot chocolate and, you know, enjoy it from that place. But to really, to really sit in contemplation with food, you know, this is, it's been my teacher plant for that. You know, it's really made me realize Oh, wow, you know, what's the most important is the lack of fight within me, you know, because there's so much of this dietary stuff has so much internal battles connected to it, you know, and the stress hormones that are created out of that, I shouldn't eat that, and I should eat that, you know, that, that, that creates a vicious loop of self-sabotage long term. It just ends up with one back exactly in the same place they, they left off, whereas coming from a place of mindfulness and just perfection even if it's having a coffee and a, a slice of chocolate cake you know if you can do that with a sense of appreciation and permission then your choices in in my experience usually go towards a more healthier lifestyle because you know, there's no battle in there you know and, and that's been one of the most paradoxical and hardest things to learn you know that when we when, it, when we give ourselves permission to do whatever we want, we usually will choose healthy, you know, we yeah. will, the body will self-regulate, you know, that's the crazy thing. We just have to learn to trust ourselves. And yeah, get out of the way, almost, you know, you can go from one uh, bad diet and implement a structure around all these new diets 
But after a time, that then becomes rigid and seasons change, things change, and you find yourself back at square one where I'm stuck in this diet. Whereas flexibility, and that comes from attunement and listening to the body's signals. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I think it is that kind of reality of life is always mirroring back to you your exact state of being. So, you know, if you end up at someone's house and they offer you a food that's not on your diet list, you know, in the past I used to be like, oh, no, I can't eat that because I'm on this whatever diet. Now I look at it as I just say thank you and I just look at into, oh, is there any battle in me? Is there any fight in me? That's interesting. Mm -hmm going up and I and I do the work on that you know I do the work on you know the judgments or the perceived rights and wrongs I'm just more amazed as I relax and I you know let go of the the stories of how one should be that life does seem to align me with cool people that eat well and suddenly there's always this creative exploration you know like with my children you know, foraging has become such a big thing, you know, the connection right. to nature, you know, it's just so exciting, you know, it feels like the granny in me has awoken, you know, I, I just want to make <laughs> all the dark cordial and, uh, you know, get a wild garlic pesto and, and it feels, I say granny because the last person I remember was my granny doing this, you know, I, I feel like it's kind of skipped a generation, we've lost those lovely little antidotal connections and stories to to food as well as you know when you when you understand the whole chain as you know it just makes you really want to reach for good choices with my cacao you know we support these three farmers in the remote region of central ecuador and so i'm not just selling ecuador for my own profit you know I, i'm supporting these guys livelihoods you know so suddenly everything becomes more meaningful and more connected so when i go out and i shop for things i have that thinking in me you know it's like Who's this supporting, you know, is this, you know, and it feels so good in the body to support, you know, to love and to connect all the pieces of the picture from the farmers to myself, to my team, to the people drinking the medicine, to the effect that they're going to have in the world. So I think very much in our culture right now, we're being asked to look at sustainability in our action, you know, and this is something that I feel the medicine of cacao brings in. It brings in a heart-centered movement, which, you know, you'll know the science of it. It's just like a superfood on multiple levels. But beyond that, it's just so different to the coffee. You know, so different. It just creates, it creates movement without any of those kind of drops or mental kind of antagonism. It just, I can't tell you how many things have been created in my life since I started working with this medicine. It's just amazing. So. And how long have you been working with it? Ah, so about, oh, well, it came into my life about four or five years ago. Okay. And, you know, I was, I was on the big journey of like the big plant medicines, you know, the ayahuascas and the DMTs and all of that kind of stuff. You know? And ironically, it was during those journeys that essential oils and cacao came in. And it was very much like the, the bigger plants saying to me, there's just as much potency and power in these overlooked everyday things. And yeah. this, this is where you have to do your work. And God, it's just like an endless study because there's, you know, suddenly there's all the weeds are suddenly medicine. And, you know, it's just so exciting because, you know, we just go for a walk and suddenly we're in this jungle of like, what's this? And I wonder what this does. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm more interested in stories, you know, you know, thinking of, I was the other day with my kids and thinking about, you know, when we're kids and we're, we're introduced to plants, are we introduced to plants in a way that's magical, like the buttercup put under your chin, you know, yeah, yeah. like butter, you know, and, and the daisy chains and how, how is nature introduced and how do we introduce that to our children in a way that's yeah. going to throw a seed for future exploration, you know, and so, yeah, this whole chain, you know, this innocence to creation chain is, is what's really showing up in, in my life and co-creation what we're doing it's not about competition it's about collaboration and more and i think the energy of mother nature is just 
really coming through strong now. You know, it's like, let's be healthy people. This is just, you can, you can achieve so much in the world space, you know, and it's, it's all about being humble because it's about dropping our egos. We don't know. I don't know. Sure. I've no, I've no freaking idea what's best for another person. But when I, when I can lean into medicines of, of nature and co-creation, I can be guided and I can be shown. And then it's like innocence. It's like we're children again. And we're like, wow, yeah. life's so exciting. <laughs> so, yeah. I love it. Coming back to that, that state or that space of listening, like I said, being in nature, you have to be more receptive. You can hear the birds and there's just much more going on. I think people, you know, and we all do it. I'm guilty of it who go and pick food up at the supermarket, it's very disconnected. It's very unnatural environment. You're picking things up in normally plastic packaging and it, it, it's completely disconnected. You've got no, and obviously all food has come on a journey. And what I picked up on what you're saying is to be aware of that journey of the farmers and the transportation and, and the packaging and then the whole supply chain connects you more. So you're in a, a state and a space of alignment, which we alluded to already, and connection before you've even eaten the food. Whereas if you go to a supermarket, you're disconnected, you open a disconnected packet, it's plastic, it's you know not compostable, you're creating waste, and then you're eating food unaware of the journey it's been on. And so it's not gonna take you on, on the journey. So yeah, I can really resonate with what you're saying. Alignment. Yeah. yeah. I think it's so interesting because what comes to me is money. You know, this is the the big story that like when I when I ask people why don't they make Choices. It's always money, you know, like, yeah. oh, but it's too expensive to do this. And so I thought, oh, well, I'll just start living the reality that I feel um, mm. I want to promote, you know, because it's so easy to say, don't go to the supermarket, you know. And then, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I better practice what I preach. And actually, lockdown this time in COVID has been amazing because I was like, I am not queuing. That's like my yeah. big thing. I'm like, I am such a princess like that. I'm like, I'm not fucking queuing. I'm just gonna like bring life to me. So I always have a lovely organic veg box delivered, which is local, you know, and then I sourced, you know, some meat to be delivered. And then we started growing all our vegetables in our back garden, not enough to sustain us because we live in a city, but you know, we got three chickens and you know, suddenly, the, yeah, the food bills started to get like really expensive, you know, but you know what happened was that I'm not spending as much money on other stuff and suddenly life's just showing me how to make this work and then there's abundance and because I'm eating these better foods and because aesthetically they're better, I'm feeling more positive and then because of that I'm attracting more clients and then I'm making more money and then it's all paid back, you know, and the cycle continues and this paradox that I wish I could just say to people just take a dive like money is not linked to you'll have a certain amount of money and then you'll be ready to go it's about making the choices from now and if you can only afford two organic apples then eat your organic apples and go on a fast you know whatever it's it's kind of this yeah I wish I could say it's as simple as us just saying don't go to the supermarkets but I know from my own life it's a journey and, and mm. just one step, another step will unfold. And so I think it's kind of trusting that as 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 we move towards health, health moves towards us and, and, and it and it comes at a faster pace. So the beginning is always more challenging, you know, the the detoxing, the changing, the habits, the programs, they're sticky, they're 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 ingrained. That's when you need support. You know, that, that's when it's okay to reach out and follow systems or guidance. And then you get to the point where you are the guidance system. You, mm. you, you just know. And you know because as soon as you step off, you get like a, a smack from the universe or some kind of raft comes up. Or, you know, it's like the sensitivity in your system becomes stronger and stronger. And the sensitivity is, you know, what is needed in this world, you know, because... When we're sensitive beings, we can connect with Mother Nature and we can make choices on being aware and concerned and empathic towards other people and their pain, you know. And so I think health is just a huge area. You know, it's 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 about us being what we were born to be, you know. We were we weren't we didn't come here to be unhealthy. We came here to to thrive just like a plant would thrive in the jungle. 
And so health is about creating the right environments, you know, the right, you know, everything's. And, and you were mentioning just before we went to the call, we were talking about this morning routine. So maybe you want to bring that in. That's popping in. Well, I was just going to say, you brilliantly brought it back full circle to answer the question, what is health and environment, the sensitivity to the universe? or nature kind of sending us signals, or more importantly, your body sending us signals. So the ability to listen um, and align. Alignment was another thing that, you know, you've you mentioned that health is to you. Um, and so different practices maybe require some small amount of implementation, but I think we've touched on it already. You want to do it with a gentle touch, you, know, you don't want to have to use force. And you just mentioned the morning um, routines and kind of starting the day, as you also said in our, our free live chat, it's the same with any relationship, it's any business project, the way you start it really is gonna set the foundation. So we've both got two kids, if I get rudely awakened by the kids, I'm on the back foot, I'm in defense and I'm like, oh, struggling. So to set my alarm before the kids wake up, almost sounds counterintuitive if I'm already waking up tired with the kids being my alarm. Why would I want to wake up earlier? But I, I swallowed that medicine and made myself get up earlier. And just getting up, still feeling a bit tired, but not having the kids barking instructions or requests or demands straight away just gives you that space. So you can kind of drop in, check on your alignments, and you can just relax everything and just be more prepared for the day. So I'm um, now... And if you'd have asked me this question six months ago, I couldn't have believed that I'd been promoting people waking up earlier. Um, but now I'm a massive fan and big advocate of just getting up a little bit earlier, just so you've got that quality time to yourself. So you can yeah. come back to your center, come back to yourself mm -hmm. and prepare yourself for the day. So that is a big thing for me at the minute to do with health. Yeah. I'm not getting as, quite yeah. as much sleep. I've got to get to bed a bit earlier. But yeah, just having that morning routine it yeah. is so important for me. I, I think it's... It everything in my life is about ceremony now, you know, so I go into ceremony with plants to learn how to be in everyday life. And the container of ceremony is so, it's such a great teacher because the first thing you do when you go into a ceremony is you set an intention, you know, yeah. and set, setting an intention is just basically going, <clears throat> you know, I'm really choosing, I'm really choosing to have this journey. So it brings the choice back to you rather than being such a victim of your reality. Mm -hmm. and then you go on a journey with any plant medicine, you go down into the underworld and you see all your shadows and you might have a pretty rough time down there. <clears throat> and then you surrender and then you're brought up to the light and everything's blissful. And then you go into integration, which is reflection. So then you have time to digest and assimilate just like the body would, you know, like... <clears throat> We choose the foods, we put them in our mouths, we swallow them into our stomach, <clears throat> the acid breaks them down, and we release them back into Mother Nature. Like everything is showing us how to live our lives. And so the daily reality of waking up in the morning is just the beginning of a ceremony, the ceremony of the day. Mm -hmm. And it's the, de the part of the day where we get to set the tone. And then we go into the day and all sorts of things happen in our days, maybe like you know, we have a fight with someone or we're a bit, whatever. And we get to be more self-reflective because we've given ourselves space and choice. Then when it gets to the evening, which is my also my new practice, is to spend time in reflection. So mm -hmm. fire has been, very much been the teacher. You know, we got rid of our TV like 10 years ago and just slowly being taught about the importance of putting time around things. So when you can put time in the morning and the evenings, then you put time around everything. So you put time around all the segments of your day and that allows for better absorption and assimilation, which is reflected in our bodies and the gut. And me, for example, have dreadful gut problems from you know vaccinations and antibiotics as a child. And I just wanted to digest life at a hundred miles an hour and bounce, bounce from experience to experience, you know, like putting experiences in my mouth, but never allowing them to be digested, you know? And what that creates is an, like a non-embodied state long time, long term. So getting into plant medicine has really taught me, you know, like, how do I eat? Do I swap? You know, my big thing at the moment is just like, I want to slow down eating. I spend so long sourcing, preparing, caring about my food 
and then can I could just oh, oh shit I didn't stay conscious for that like what did that happen and rather than be angry with myself you know it's just an area I'm working on you know it's big you know it's it's a trauma it's it's something that's been passed down where eating food was very much a survival thing you know it it wasn't about thriving and, and when I eat like that. <clears throat> I also, my life reflects that. I become unpresent to when the good is actually happening, which is the eating, you know? You know, and then I'm like, you know, running to the next experience and then I get there and, oh shit, I wasn't present to that again, you know? And so, you know, that process that. of food is such, a, is such a great teacher for the areas where we need to improve on or can we finish a meal and just give ourselves time or do we get up and run away you know run around and you know it's it's just so fascinating to use the whole process it doesn't really matter actually what you use to put your consciousness on but food's just a great one you know it's it's such a it's such a teacher yeah well we get you know most people have two three meals a day and then snacks in between so for, you know it's, it really resonates with me saying that because I practice a, a slow routine in the morning, I do my meditation, but I can then be really guilty. I've got to get to the kitchen now, and I run into the kitchen, and I find myself like rushing to get breakfast ready, you know, me and the family, to get on to the next thing. And it's just to kind of bring that mindfulness into the eating, which I know people, myself especially, can be really guilty of. So a new practice I'm trying to introduce to help with the simulation and absorption is to relax the nervous system, to be in the parasympathetic nervous system just prior to eating. And it's not always possible, but it's a constant journey. But prior to eating, you just have a minute, just have a few breaths just to come back to your center and relax. And then it gives you the trigger to be more mindful, to chew more, to enjoy the flavors, to appreciate what's happening, family, friends around you and not just a, like you say, down it and on to the next yeah. thing. So yeah. And then yeah. because everyone's eating every day, you've got that, you know, if you attach that mindful habit to the eating, like you say, hopefully that mindful habit will then spill over into other interactions with other engagements and other activities that you're doing. Yeah, I think it, it's funny because we were in school, we had prayer, you know, before eating our meals. Oh, wow. God, prayer, you know. I just want to eat like I totally wasn't present to any of the prayer and you know having a journey with plant medicine and obviously bringing in prayer you know this is something this is a space where we introduce people who come for dinner at our house or our kids but it's prayer in a different way like it's it's often about just looking at the plate of food and then just talking about where you know thank you for the blueberries that come from I don't know whether Spain or you know thank you for the and it just to to teach myself and remember but also to teach the children that yeah. this this plate of food we're eating is just like global now pretty much even though as much as possible i would love to eat local source food you know to to sustain our bodies in my belief you know we do need supplementation and there are products that come from the world that you know really help like cacao's my cacao's coming from ecuador and i am so grateful you know, I am so grateful for this amazing food that gets to give me a bit of the spice of the Latino energy, which, you know, is great, you know. Yeah. And so this idea that the that ceremony and prayer is, it's all weaved into ceremony, you know. If you just bring ceremony into your life, if you bring ritual, you know, we are ritualistic beings and we have forgotten that, you know. We replace ritual with routine. Mm. And it's a completely different experience because routine is really driven from a mental place. And ritual is driven from a full-bodied, heart-centered space. You know, and it's, it's kind of cheesy to say we're having ritual. But routine, you know, that's okay in the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, I, part of my journey is about normalizing these things that people think are spiritual or out there. And going, actually, it's not spiritual or out there. These are the human experience that we've forgotten about, you know, to hold your brother and sister's hand around food and to just give thanks and to be mindful is just one of the most beautiful things you can do. You know, it's, it's, there's nothing weird about that. You know, we, we spend our entire lives trying to connect, you know, and, and, and we, we find we do it through shopping or addiction 
And yet these little things like food can be the most healing for me. My childhood, no matter how shit it was, my parents had fantastic food and it created heart. You know, it made me realize that when you can just sit around a table with people, you're in ceremony, you're in connection, you know? And from that place, you're gonna be creating serotonin, you know, yeah, yeah. you're just gonna be feeling great. So yeah, it's funny how we're, so much of the emphasis in our culture is put on what you eat, but not how you eat. And yeah. it's just so nice to go, it's both, you know, it's both. And it's really, it's really been a trial and error journey for me. Like I, I, I might have moments and I don't do it all the time and I forget. And that's why I love being around people who are on this journey because they remind me or they bring something else to the table that I might've forgotten about or sitting around the conversation becomes more high vibe. We talk about the food, we, we make connections, you know, it's just like, it's almost, it's almost like we're living in a time where we're about, it's about remembering. I don't know if that resonates with you. It's, sure. it's about, you know, on some level, our DNA knows this, like our ancestors know this. And we just haven't had the education or necessarily the experience. And there's something about when you get into a certain, dare I say, vibe, that you just feel like you know things. Do you just, I don't know about you, but I just go for a walk in the park sometimes and I put my hands on a plant and I think, I know this, what is this? And then I look it up and it's some plant and it's just like, how did I know that? You know, and it's kind of that thing of like, I feel like we're just remembering, you know, and, and we're, we're on this discovery to remember. And as we remember, we get shown more and more and more. And then you feel like you're living in Eden, even if the rest of the world is in Asda, drinking their cans, completely unconscious. You might be right in the smack. I, I mean, I live in a city, which is always a challenge. And I kind of, my ego says, I should be living in an ashram in the countryside. But it's such a great teacher to live here because yeah. I, got, I get to really practice. Can I hold my center in the middle of all of these diverse energies, you know, yeah. and not be pulled out? And can I also drop my judgments? You know, can I yeah. choose? eat what I want to eat and can I be inspired but without going and that makes you wrong because it doesn't make you wrong you know we're all at our journey and I'm sure someone else would look at my journey and think gosh she's got so much to learn and they'd probably be right you know but you know why are we here on this planet but not to have an experience of life and to learn and to stay humble in that and to just share with each other so I think what you're doing with these podcasts and your work is just so inspiring because you're bringing so much more than just the food, which is amazing, um, to people. So thanks, love. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you chatting. I'm going to ask if you have one more little uh, nugget, something that you're practicing. I know you've been eating and enjoying some of my chocolate recently because you're on a sugar-free or, or let us know or some, you know, some little practice that yeah. you're embodying at the minute. Yeah, so I... I do have a slightly sweet tooth and um, I'm off sugar and your chocolates um, are pretty much the only chocolates that I can have because even the coconut sugar is not great for me at the moment. Sure. And they're, what are they called? I think I've got a packet, but I don't have the, I don't know if you've got them there to tell everybody. I'm not in the hand. The choco, activated choco seed bites. Yes. And it's just so nice because I love cooking and I could make them myself if I wanted to. But you know what it's like, you know, if I make curry and you make a curry, your curry is going to just taste totally different to my curry. And as the mom of the house, where I'm always cooking, it's so nice when other people cook for me. So this is part of my shopping that I allow myself to be inspired by other people's foods. And I don't feel I have to do everything myself, you know? So it's, I could dehydrate crackers and I do dehydrate crackers, but you know, you're as calm already done. And sometimes, you know, I'm busy and it's just no, so nice. I'm on the team. You've only got so much you can do. So much I can do, but just so nice to know that there's no excuse. There's no excuse, even if if time, you don't have time to do things, you know, there are products out there like yours are just completely guilt-free, high vibe, you know, going to keep you going. You know, I like I like to have the, the ritual of, you know, sometimes a cup of tea and something sweet and I don't want to have sugar. So, you know, because they're not cheap, 
because they're really good products also brings a bit of reverence to them as well. Oh. You know, it's not like I'm just stuffing in a cheap chocolate bar. I'm going, you know what, I've chosen to invest my money in this product. So I'm going to sit and I'm going to eat it slowly and I'm going to feel really grateful. So, you know, there's something to be said about this whole money thing we've been talking about, you know, and as a practitioner, you know, selling my cow, people are like, oh, 35 pounds for 500 grams. That's an awful lot. And I'm like, that's 10 cups of ceremonial cacao. That's three pounds 50 for basically a plant medicine journey. That's the cheapest plant medicine journey mm. I know out there. Like, how is that expensive? You know, and so it's, it's about kind of reprioritizing um, and choosing. And I just really hope that people are listening to this will just make some more choices around their foods and their snacks. And to see, you know, you go to, you might go to the pub or you might go to the thing and spend, well, I don't even go to the pub, but I don't even know how much a pint costs anymore. But I imagine it's more than a pack of your stuff. You know, it's yeah. just priorities. It's just priorities. And it's all also about the choice of putting in energy. And what's so lovely about you, which I know about you, is I know you're so conscious when you source your ingredients, when you make your ingredients. You know, I know how much love you put into it all. So I can just sit there fully trusting this whole process, you know, which I don't always have that information with other products, you know, and I wish more and more the food industry would share that journey. You know, right, me too. it's so lovely to be involved in someone's creations and their choices and their lives and know where all the different things like, like knowing that our farmers in Ecuador, you know, that this is their livelihood, you know, that yeah. me selling this cacao enables us to secure orders, which secures their next harvest, which in these times, the, the ecosystem, so unstable so it's moved from four four harvests a year to two harvests a year you know so life is changing whether we like it or not you know and how do we adapt and support and so yeah there's a positive side of consumerism you know it's not all bad it's just consuming no. with choice and consuming with consciousness i suppose is the is the ultimate thing and how do we all start consume with consciousness you know and that's the same with diet it's not all about like taking away it's about kind of adding in you know adding in mm. the probiotics adding in the prebiotics you know bringing more in more abundance in and i just see that this is what we're being wired and re-educated to do so thanks to you i have my big stash of chocolate that will probably last about three days <laughs> <laughs> Well, enjoy it. Thank you, love. Thanks so much for chatting today. I think we covered so many different areas. Uh, I hope people can go back and re-watch this. You know, we touched on sensitivity to nature, alignment, listening, the importance of shopping local, seasonal, organic. Things might be more expensive. You're going to get more nutri nutrition from the more expensive foods. Therefore, you need to eat less. I was really, and I didn't get to, I should have jumped in when you were talking about the family meals. I think that's such an important part, that connection to others, that, you know, banter and laughter. These are all super nutrients that are accessible to food if you have that sense of community and just that, you know, that gratitude of where the food has come from, that prayer, whichever form that takes before the meal, just sets you up in a much more relaxed appreciative state so you're going to be in the right nervous system the rest and digest which are obviously so important to you can have a really expensive plate of superfoods like we've said before if you're in a rush you're going to absorb far less nutrition you just take that minute beforehand a few conscious deep breaths just to relax that's free and it only takes 30 seconds you're much more likely to absorb a lot more nutrition so yeah mindful eating will then set you up to have more mindful interactions for the rest of the day. So yeah, I think we touched on like 101 things. So I really appreciate <laughs> your energy and charismatic chatting. Uh, I hope you'll come back on uh, and we'll have another chat another time. Definitely, Alex. Just, I just want to give a little plug to my new baby. This Please. is my ceremonial cacao and it's just 
so beautiful. It's like really floral notes and really smooth. And it's really high vibe. And I drank a big cup before coming on the call. So if you like what I'm saying, it's kind of helped by these guys. And it's on my website, Garden of Alchemy. So, and me and Alex might have some co-creations in the pipeline in the future. So please stay tuned and in touch. So thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, I'll link nice. your website below. Thanks so much for coming on, Annabelle. Thank you Chessing. all. Yeah, thank so you. much love. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.